Now, the reason I call it slippery, I suppose, is because there's been much gaslighting in the past of, from the left claiming that the culture wars are merely a figment of the right's imagination yeah, and people, yeah, sort I, of, I suppose, one. just denying that this stuff exists. Um, I want to also ask about the outcomes of this revolutionary movement. In your book, you describe many of the destructive, the destructive elements of what people are doing. So, for example, they're going after uh, statues and monuments and authors and cancelling people and all this stuff. And you describe it as a very destructive movement. It's very easy to destroy something. It takes years, decades, whatever, to build up a, a, a civilization. Do you think these people have a utopia that they're trying to aim for, as we've seen with, let's say, the communists in the 20th century? Or is it merely just permanent revolution, permanent attacking the past? What, where's the end goal? Well, first of all, let me pick up on the point about uh, um, the culture wars. It were. I, I find this claim among the most risible claim of my and other critics. Uh, they say um, Douglas Murray is engaging in a culture war. No, I'm not. Um, uh, far from it. I don't want to engage in any kind of culture war. I think it's a, a ridiculous um, idea. But if you uh, if you say that everything in my past, everything in my civilization's past, everything in my culture's past is terrible, and all my predecessors are terrible, and I'm terrible, and then when I raise a peep and say, "Hang on a minute," you say, "Oh no, you're engaging in a culture war." No, sorry, that's that's that's. Uh, that's to use that horrible term you just used as well. That's a form of gaslighting. Um, pretending that, uh, that, I mean, the left plays these ravenous, ravaging culture wars against everything. And then whenever you reply to them, it says, ah, you're just playing a right wing culture war. No, it is not at all a culture war to identify that there is a revolutionary movement that is seeking to destroy everything in the Western past and say that there is nothing good in it and there's nothing good about the Western present and white people are awful. That, that is not to engage in a culture war if you raise a hand and say, no, count me out and here's how. Uh, that, that isn't. That's absolutely basic moral hygiene, uh, basic intellectual um, honesty and decency to say that highly illiterate and ill-informed people who deeply dislike the society and civilization in question should not be allowed free reign to ignorantly tear up everything that they don't know anything about and then cry whenever anyone says they're not going along with them you know no i mean i think it's it's among the most risible uh, um claims that that the radical left in particular makes that, that, that it's the right that creates these these culture wars it, it's it's a it's a left wing creation which some people on the right and the centre and the left rightly object to and should object to and should be allowed to object to without being accused of some frivolous you know conflict. Um, uh, as for the utopia, yes, of course. I mean, um, uh, the, the 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 movements that I critique, the anti Western movements I critique in the war in the West are um, absolutely uh, utopian. It's just that, like most utopians, they have no idea what. You, Utopia looks like. I mean, I just said that one of the most achievable, uh, not a utopia, because I don't really believe in utopias, I think it's a sort of childish dream, um, but a, 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 um, a satisfactory state of affairs, I would argue, is one that we are broadly speaking getting to in recent decades. Um, uh, we were, had recognized that, I think probably we discussed some of this when we last spoke in relation to my previous book, The Madness of Crowds, that basically um, people were agreed that, and I, I say this is, I think, a right and left thing in most countries like Britain and America, um, we were pretty much agreed on the idea that um, somebody with a competency to do something should not be held back from achieving what they could do by dint of any characteristic over which they had no say. So like nobody who was a woman should be stopped from doing things that she can do just because she's a woman. Obviously, nobody who's gay or lesbian should be stopped from doing something just because of their sexual orientation if they're good at it. And uh, likewise, it's ridiculous to stop people doing things or prevent people from achieving what they can achieve simply because of the color of their skin. And I think that was pretty much agreed upon or recognized. And the people who thought otherwise were really at the margins until quite recently. And they were on the margins of the far right, I'd have said. Well, then, 
reminding us of the wheel of politics that can occur. The far left started to engage in this same game the far right used to engage in, and some parts still do, which is to say, no, your racial characteristics are the most important thing about you. And they will determine whether you're allowed to speak. And if because of, again, because of past injustice, we must have present day injustice. If white people were given the microphone in the past, you must give the microphone to black people today. Um, that instead of uh, getting to a situation where we were colorblind, even colorblindness is alleged to be a sign of racism. Um, so that's what they've been doing. Is, that's what they've been doing the war against, is this idea that, that we were actually getting to, which was the dream of Martin Luther King, among others. And in half a century, that dream has been completely inverted. So that today's people who would like to call themselves sort of anti-racist, as I say, actually just engage in race baiting racism of their own. And uh, it's, it's I, I suppose, to be fair to them, they think that if they do this for a while, you know, you can cow people in the West and upset them enough and um and then we get to equity but i don't think we i don't think what they're dreaming is at all thought through and i don't think we get there um we certainly don't get there by warring on majority populations or trying to destroy all of the roots of what got us to where we are i mean the so-called anti-racists now claim that absolutely everything that is what we used to regard as a desirable attainment is racist i mean you know um, in um, the, the, the social justice movements of America and much more that have now come right into the mainstream, the teaching unions and much more. You have ideas like, you know, punctuality is a white concept and is therefore racist. Um, accuracy is a white concept and therefore racist. Um, showing your workings in, uh, in STEM subjects is racist and, and therefore it's a product of white people. And even that testing, standardized testing is a product of white people and therefore racist and of course you'll notice that all of these things actually among other things kick away all of the ladders that exist in society for hard-working and accomplished uh, people of any racial background to get on and so i think that the revolutionary movement of our time the cultural revolutionary movement of our time is actually in the name of getting to a utopia that they cannot define is actually just going to create more and more hell for everybody, which is why it has to be stopped now. Now, will you? You know, this whole concept of the culture wars, which I think started probably late 50s and definitely in the 60s, and then really started to ramp up 70s, 80s, and 90s, and obviously into this century. And the thing is, the left demonizes anytime you use the word culture war they basically are saying you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're, you know, blank, and then put the word phobe in there. And the left, up to, I think up until probably the last few years, has really been able to play the, what I call, you know, the political racist deck of cards. You know, they reach into that deck and they pull out the B, bigot, by God pull out the R, racist, which has been there from the beginning. You know, there was a new one. Insurrectionist. If you question anything about J6, insurrectionist card, the I card, boom, you know, goes on the table. Oh, xenophobe, boom. Islamophobe, boom. Migrantphobe, boom. I mean, it was just constant. The decks were just being used, reshuffled, and then thrown right back onto the playing field. But recently, because of what happened, you know, Black Lives Move, Black Lives, you know, Matter movement came up, and then they it sort of has now dissipated because of all of the, I guess, reporting that's been shown that the money was, you know, laundered, it was misused, you know, they bought homes, it didn't go to the right people. So all of a sudden, people's eyes slowly and slowly are being opening opened up, and it is to the matter of people like Douglas Murray, people like. Uh, TPSU, you know, Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens, uh, Daily Wire, Matt Walsh, you know, Michael Knowles, uh, Rogan, um, Bongino. I mean, I could go on and on and on. 
But, uh, you know, Bill O'Reilly used to talk about the culture wars in Christmas, and everybody used to say, oh, there we go again, They're talking about the war on Christmas. But the thing was is that, you know, you could attack Christianity. It's fair game, still is, for people in the left, the Google network, the alphabet networks, academia, Hollywood, to attack, you know, Christians and Christianity. And as Douglas was saying, anything to deal with white, whiteness, go ahead and attack. That's perfectly fine. And because whiteness is being personified as being thought of that they were the ones that were holding all the policies and they were the ones that were racist to everybody of a minority color and blacks, well, now guess what? It should be reverse racism and continue to use reverse racism until when? Until these people think they get to nirvana or kumbaya or they get to, you know, some type of uh, I guess, I don't know what these guys are, you know, they're always pointing to the fact that we're just aiming for the, just that better society. It's never been present anywhere, but we know if we implement our way of doing it, we'll be able to reach it because we know better than you guys. And oh yeah, you know what? Communism didn't, it wasn't the right kind of communism that'll get you to Nirvana, but the communism we're talking about, it can. Oh, that socialism that you talk about that killed millions of people? That wasn't the right kind of socialism. The socialism we're talking about that can get you to nirvana it hasn't been tried yet, but we, if we implement it, we know how to get there. The same thing with Marxist theory. It's postmodernism and this attack on culture. All they say, as soon as you raise your, you know, just, just a peep, as soon as you just, ah, ah, you raise your bigot. No, 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 you can't talk about that. There's no such thing. It's just made up. It's a right-wing talking point. This is what's happening, but there are so many people out there right now, people like yourselves out there that, you know, are just, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and said, I've had it up to freaking here. Right here, right here, right here. And I ain't taking this crap anymore. And you stand up and you say with one loud voice, that's it, enough. I don't care what you call me. Go ahead, call me a racist. Go ahead, call me a bigot. You know what? You're the racist. You're the bigot. You're the phobe. That's what we need to do, folks. We need to use their words and throw it right back into their faces. Absolutely. That's the only way. Someone called you a racist? Say, no, I don't think I'm the racist. I think you're the racist for calling me a racist. You're the phobe for calling me a phobe how dare you how dare you trigger me like that you know use the same tactics that they use against themselves that's the way that you win this battle folks by shouting out loud at the all on the rooftops with one loud huge voice we have had enough of your crap and we're not going to take it anymore that's the way it's done. Anyway, that's the way I do it. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already and we've earned a subscription, you like our content, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. Like, share, and follow us. You all know what to do. Check out our other video links here and below. My final thought, as always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.